Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on, let's give God some praise in this place. Wherever you're sitting at home or you're in your car, you're on your way somewhere, we bless you, we thank you. Uh, it's going to be an amazing day. Come on, like, share. Come on, we want to. We want people all over the country, all over the world, to experience what we experience every week here at Limitless Church. You don't want to miss this service because God has something special for you on today. All right. So I need all of my Limitless family who is, who's ever watching. I need you to put in the comments. We will celebrate the King. Come on, put in the comments. Celebrate the King. Put in the comments, celebrate the king, because we come to celebrate the king. Come on, like, share, put in the comments, celebrate the king. Let me know that you're watching. Come on, celebrate the king, because I get excited when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul, your soul, our soul, it cries hallelujah. And we thank God for saving us. Amen. Pastor Stacy's going to come and she's going to open up service and then we're going to come and have a wonderful time. All right. So I need you to go in your living room, cast it from your phone to your TV, turn your surround sound up, grab your little beat, uh, beat uh, sound system, turn it on. We're going to have an amazing time today. We got some great singers behind us. We got a great band behind us. Pastor is going to come and preach this house down and God's going to get the glory. Amen. God's going to get the glory. Come on, Sister Stacy. Come on. Hallelujah. God, we bless you this morning, Lord. Lord, we ask you just to be the centerpiece this morning, Lord. In our households, in church today, God, we come into your house, Lord, giving you thanks, God, because you're good, Father. Because you reign, you continue to be faithful, Father. Lord, I thank you, God, for what you're going to bring forth this morning. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to have your way. Have your way with the praise and worship team, with the vocals, with Pastor Lord, the word that you're going to bring this morning, Father Lord, that you deliver it full force, God, and we receive it, God. So we praise you, we thank you, we worship you in spirit and in truth. Have your way, God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, give God praise right where you are, in your living room, in your bedroom, in the kitchen, in the car. Come on, come on. We will celebrate the King. Come on, put it in those comments. Celebrate the King and make sure everybody, everybody share this, share this. Post it on somebody's wall. God is doing a good thing here at Limitless Church and God is good and he is good. And so people from every nation and tongue, we give him glory. Come on. We're going to sing some oldies with goodies today. Put those hands.
I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My turn you pay from the cross. From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. I tell you pain from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky Lord I live your name on high so be
Facebook page, Instagram. We're asking that you do that. Also, if you're interested, every nine, every Sunday at 9 a.m. sharp, we are hosting a men's and women's Bible study. We have a men's Bible study. We have a women's Bible study, Sunday school. If you're interested in that, please put in the comments, I'm interested, and one of us will get back with you and give you, share the link to you so that you can be on or so that you can be on this broadcast so that you can participate in the men's and women's Bible study. Another thing that we'd like to share with you today is Limitless has been an, uh, a blessing to Cecil King. Southwest Kia Northwest. We were blessed to partner with them and we were able to get 150 sandwiches out to them, share sandwiches with them, share the gospel with them. I think we got an opportunity to pray with them as well. So we were, we were able to get out there and be a blessing to them. So we're thankful that we've been a part of, we were able to be a part of that. Um, also, um, if you are feeling like you're being disconnected. The best thing for you to do today is, is to connect. What do I mean by that this morning when I had time with God? God said disconnection is a subtle spirit. And sometimes we find ourselves being further and further away just because of what's going on now. I challenge you Stay, stay connected with us. Stay connected with social media. Stay connected in the worship service. Stay connected in men's and, Bible, and women's Bible study. Stay connected because we'll find ourselves being disconnected. So I encourage you to be disconnected. There's a lot of things going on that we're excited about in Limitless Church. We encourage you to be connected and stay connected with us. Wherever you are, stay connected. Amen. We are limitless. Amen. Let's get let's prepare for offering today. Now, I know that you guys have got received these stimulus checks and all these things. You're excited about getting out there and doing a lot of things. But the best thing that you can do with those checks is invest in the house of the Lord. That's the best investment there is. I see online where people are investing in these. Invest 25, invest 100, you'll get 200, 400, 800 overnight. Well, investing in God, you'll, you'll receive a manifold, hundredfold blessing every time. I encourage you to, to decide right now that I'm going to be a blessing to the ministry. I'm going to be a blessing to God. I'm going to be a blessing for my family. It is offering time in the house of the Lord. So as you prepare your offering and you can give right where you are. We have this awesome thing called push pay that you can add your phone. I have it to where it can just come out automatically now. So you can add it to your phone. You can do push pay right where you are. Of course, uh, again, I challenge you today to sow your, slim, your stimulus check today. There's, there's the way that we give in this church again is by push pay. And so you out there that want to give today, please do so. Limitless Church, just because you're not in, this, in these churches, in these seats today, we encourage you to pay your tithes and your offerings still. As you see, ministry is still going on. Pastors still bringing a word. We still have to, the lights still have to be paid, things still have to be paid. So I encourage you today to still give. Just because you're home doesn't mean the church stops. We still are operating here in this ministry. So again, I need for you to give today. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you today. Lord God, we give you glory, honor, and praise. God, we worship and magnify your name. God, we thank you for what you're doing even now during this time. God, we thank you for 
allowing us to be a blessing to the ministry. God, we thank you that you've even blessed us with these stimulus checks, God, so that we can be a blessing to the ministry. And God, we thank you, Father, that you are even now, God, continually giving us work, allowing those that can work, work, and allowing those that can't work, you're being a blessing to them still in the midst of the storm. And God, for that, we give you glory. Now, Father, I pray that whoever gives, God, I pray that you bless it 1,000-fold in the name of Jesus. God, and those that have a desire to give, Father, I pray that you give them seed to sow on the next time in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name for things that are going now in this service, God, and that we're able to be a blessing across the world for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. You may give. on today. Uh, for those, the small group we have here in the sanctuary on today, and for those that are walk, watching by way of social media, um, whether it be Facebook, Facebook Watch, or some other platform at a later date, uh, we thank God for you, and we welcome you to our services on today. Amen. Amen. We're really excited to have you, and we've got folks that are tuned in from all over planet earth all over the world hallelujah hallelujah and we're really excited about about that know this wherever you are in the world we are praying for you we are praying for you we are believing god with you uh, for a, a move of god in your state in your city um, in in your in your nation um, in your family we're believing God for his divine protection over you in this season. And guess what? I've got good news for you. I've got good news for you. We serve a God that is able. Hallelujah. He's able to keep you. He's able to cover you. He's able to hide you. Yes, he is. He is able. And so um, I want you to know that you're in good hands. Hallelujah. If you're in the hands of the master. And so uh, we welcome you on today. Uh, there's a word from the Lord, uh, but before I get to the, to the message on today, God bless you guys. Before I get to the message on today, um, I want to, again, reiterate uh, something that uh, Reverend Smith had mentioned on yesterday. Um, our church, Limitless Church, we partnered with um, um, one of our members, uh, Cecil, and, and uh, a, a car dealership, and we were able to provide lunches 
to uh, the Grand Prairie Fire Department. And uh, amen, amen. And so uh, we didn't know when, when it was scheduled that um, they would really need that type of support from us in that, um, in that they had this big fire off of 360 and, and Mayfield, a big gas fire. And so they were out there for hours upon hours upon hours. And so it's a blessing to be a blessing that we were able to provide some, some barbecue and sandwiches and chips and, and drink and cookie and, and things of that nature. And so uh, that's what it's all about in this season, Limitless Church. And so uh, we thank God that we were able to, to stand in the gap in such a way uh, for our first responders that were out there serving on yesterday, uh, concerned about the well-being of all of us. And so we thank God uh, for that. Uh, well, there's a word from the Lord on today. Uh, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. Um, and I want you to also go to Ecclesiastes, the first chapter, and we're going to go to verse number 9. Now, I'm starting a series on today, and, and if you would do me a big favor, we've got quite a few people that are watching by way of social media on today. I need you to do me a really big favor, really big favor. Would you be so kind, ma'am, sir, as to share this message um, on your Facebook page or to or to create what, what we call or, or what Facebook calls a Facebook watch party so that all of your friends can can kind of come in and, and hear what thus saith the Lord on today. I truly believe that there is a word from the Lord on today. I'm starting a series on today um, entitled uh, New Normal, Old Wisdom. New Normal, Old Wisdom. Um, there is this sense across the land that we're entering into this place of a new normal. But what I want to submit to the church today and to the body of Christ and to global, the globally the body of Christ, that in order for us to navigate this, this new normal, it's going to require some old wisdom. It's going to require some old wisdom. And so on today, we're going to look at some aspects of that new normal versus that old, old, old wisdom. So first of all, let's go to 2 Corinthians Let's go to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter, uh, chapter 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 3. Then we're going to go back to uh, Ecclesiastes. And for those that would stand uh, for the reading of God's word, please do so. And even in your living rooms, if you're assembled with your family, your loved ones, uh, if you would stand in respect to, uh, to the reading of God's word, amen. Um, as we are still um, observing um, those things that we do when we are in fellowship with each other, amen? Right now, we're staying connected by way of social media, but um, at, at one of these old mornings, and it won't be long, we're going to be back in fellowship one with another, amen? Amen, because that's when iron truly sharpens sharpens iron. And so uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, we're going to commence reading at verse number Verse number uh, three, um, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse five, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringeth into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I'm going to read that again because that's good eating right there. But though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing, that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringeth into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. And we're going to read, just focus on uh, verse number 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, and let, let us focus on verse number, verse number 9. Scripture says this. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. And there is no new thing under 
the sun. No new thing under the sun. I want to tag this message again on today. New normal, old wisdom. New normal, old wisdom. If you're able to do this, those that are the small group that's with me on today in the sanctuary, if you're watching by way of social media, I need you to turn to somebody. Uh, uh, good social distancing, but I need you to say, there is no new thing under the sun. There is no new thing under the sun. There's no new thing under the sun. Although what they've said, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Father, we love you. We thank you, God. Bless this time together in Jesus' name, God. As I stand here behind this sacred desk, uh, hide me behind the cross that your word might come forth with power and authority and clarity, God, that the people might walk away with our eyes open, understanding better what you are saying to the church today in Jesus' name. Bind every hindrance, every hindrance, every hindrance of a personal nature, of a communal nature, every hindrance. Bind it in the name of Jesus. God, do it for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 What Solomon had written in Ecclesiastes is he said there's nothing new under the sun. I know in, the, in this day of, of a pandemic, in this day of, of, uh, of wearing masks, in this day of storing up provision, we, we have this, this, this uh, uh, tendency to believe that this is new. Well, the Bible is very clear that there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new. Solomon's very clear. There's nothing new under the sun. Now, watch this. It may be new to you, but it's not new, ladies and gentlemen. It's not new uh, under the sun, which, which is earthward. It's not new on planet earth, ladies and gentlemen, and it's not new to God, right? And so while people are attempting to tell us that we have to navigate this new, uh, this, this, this new normal, I need you to understand that it ain't new to God. And what God has left us in order for us to be successful in navigating this new is he's left us some old wisdom. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to apply some old wisdom. You know, lack and famine is not new to the earth. These types of things have happened, have existed before. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. The Bible tells me uh, that Joseph, well, for me, with Joseph, Joseph, his father, uh, uh, gave him the coat of many colors that his brothers were angry at the fact that he was given this coat of many colors, and they were jealous. And then Joseph had a dream, and in this dream, God showed Joseph prospering in such a way that there were others that were bowing down to him, including his brethren, and Joseph being uh, immature and really not understanding that you don't share everything with everybody that God shares with you. He went out and he shared that with his brethren. Somebody say amen. And his brethren were enraged because he shared a vision of what God had, had shown him concerning his future. He shared, he shared a vision. He shared what it is that God said that he was getting ready to do in his life. In this season, I want to submit to you, don't allow vulnerability to shine through to where you become so uh, uh, naive that you begin to open up everything that God is depositing in you in this season. Because this is a season of deposits. What God is attempting to do isn't withdrawal. He's attempting to deposit some things inside of you that's going to make you a better version of who you are. This is a season of deposit. Come on, text that, hashtag that. This is a season of deposit. And I know it seems like things are getting worse in the, in the, in the earth realm. I know it seems like in this season of pandemic that uh, people are sick and they can't get well. And I know it seems like people are overwhelmed in their personal economy, in the national economy, in the global economy. But what I want you to understand is that in this season, we are in a season of kingdom deposits. Because God yet knows how to prosper his people and bless his people in the midst of a pandemic. Yes, he does. He knows how to bless his people. Well, Pastor Bynum, uh, uh, I don't feel, I don't feel very blessed right now. I don't feel very blessed right now. That's because you have a narrow definition of what blessed is. 
I don't, I don't feel very blessed right now. That's because you've allowed the devil to define what prosper is. Let me tell you what prosper is. That's why I brought up Brother Joseph. Brother Joseph, he prospered in a biblical sense. To prosper, what that means is to prosper, that means no matter what situation you find yourself in, the peace, the presence, and the power of God is moving in your life. That is what it's called to be biblically prosperous. That means that whether or not you're hated by your brethren, God is going to cause you to prosper in the presence of your enemies. Whether or not you are thrown in a pit, God is going to cause you to prosper in the presence of your enemies. Whether or not you are sold into slavery, God is going to cause you to prosper in the presence of your enemies. Yes, he will. He will cause you to prosper in the presence of your enemies. Whether or not you are a servant you're in, in, in Potiphar's house, God will cause you to Prosper in the presence of your enemies, whether or not you lied on and talked about and mistreated and, and uh, convicted of something that you never did before and then thrown into prison. God will cause you to prosper in the presence of your enemies, even in a pandemic. Even in a pandemic. I'm talking about some old wisdom now. See, see, they want to sell us on a new normal, but I want to submit, well, here's, here's my response to your new normal. Let me give you back some old wisdom. Where's that old wisdom? It's found in the words of God. Huh? Line upon line, precept upon precept. It's found in the word of God. Amen. I am not naked. I ain't running around out here as one that has no hope. I ain't ignorant. I have the word of God. And the Bible says it shall be a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this will be a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why we have to turn to the Word of God. Because if we don't turn to the Word of God, guess what? We are pray for the enemy. We are pray for the enemy. When we put more authority in what they say, yeah, they keep revising what they're saying. They keep changing. The, they keep moving the goalpost. First they said to all these 200 million people getting ready to die. Then they say, oh, no, they, we're, gonna have, we're not going to have enough hospital beds. Then, then, the, then they, they have to keep adjusting. Then they have the audacity to say, it ain't God moving. They have the audacity to say, it's us that's causing this situation to turn around. The devil is a lie in the name of Jesus. I want you to know that when God says enough is enough, that enough speaks to enough, and enough becomes enough. Hallelujah. When God says stop it, stop it, we'll look at stop it and stop it. Oh, somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. When God says enough is enough, well, how do I know that? How do I know that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm preaching myself happy up in here. How do I know that? Oh, God, because God did it in my life. Hallelujah. When the enemy sought to have me and to sift me like wheat, God stepped in and said, enough is enough. So he can speak to this pandemic. He can speak to your situation. He can speak to that fear that's running rapid in your community. The devil is alive in the name of Jesus because we serve a God that is not dead. We serve a God that ain't dead. He ain't dead. He is alive forevermore. Joseph sold into slavery. So sold into slavery. Here's what happened. And ultimately, God calls him to prosper. So we got to be careful because what he started, he prospered. And, then, and, and ultimately, he ended up, Joseph, leading in Egypt. He was a leader in Egypt. And the Bible says that there were seven good years. There were seven years of prosperity. And during those seven years of prosperity, the Bible says that Joseph, he filled up the granary. He, he made sure that there was an ample supply during the seven good years. After the seven good years, here came seven years of famine. Here came seven years of lack, right? Seven years of lack. When seven years of lack came, watch this. It's amazing. You don't hear from people until lack comes. But well, watch this, watch this, because, because it was during the, time, not, during the time of prosperity, everybody remained in their township. Everybody remained uh, doing their own thing, living the life of Riley, eat, drink, and be merry. Everybody was doing their own thing during the time of plenty.
plenty. Everybody was doing their own thing. During the time of plenty, folk weren't coming to church. During the time of plenty, folk weren't paying attention to God. During the time of plenty, folks weren't reading their Bibles. During the time of plenty, folks weren't concerned about their neighbor. During the time of Plenty folks would drive by the nursing home, not concerned whether or not there were some older folk in there that hadn't had a visitor in a long time. During the time of plenty, folks would drive by the criminal justice system and the prisons, not concerned about the incarcerated man or the incarcerated woman. During the time of plenty, folks would drive by the prostitutes and roll up their window and not be concerned about sharing the life-giving gospel of Jesus Christ. All of these things were happening during the time of plenty. But when lack came, when lack showed up at their door, that man or that woman, they came into Egypt. You don't believe me? And I ain't talking about seeing anybody. I'm talking about the people of God. I'm talking about, I'm talking about Joseph's family. Huh? I'm talking about Joseph's family. They came looking for help from Egypt. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. I'm in, I'm in the Bible. Here's what happened. They came, and the Bible says that Joseph, he opened up the granary. And so what they would do is they would bring their cows and their lambs, and they would sell them or exchange them for grain. So the economy was still moving. They would bring what they had, and they would go buy food. But then there came a time, because lack kept moving for so long, there came a time that people ran out of lambs and sheep. Uh, I got to answer a question because folk, well, a lot of folks want to wonder, you know, how is it that Israel became enslaved by Egypt? It's, it's a number of things that took place that led Israel to being enslaved by Egypt. Watch this. But one of, the, one of the major things that led Israel to being enslaved by Egypt is the fact that when they ran out of things to exchange for grain that they sold themselves into slavery in order to survive. Jesus, they, they sold themselves into slavery. Uh, I, I'm gonna, I'll be your servant if, you, if I get some food to eat. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to submit something to you. Watch how you respond to this season. Because if you are not careful, you will be following a path similar to that of the children of Israel that they went to Egypt seeking help. And when they went to Egypt seeking help, they got help to the extent that help was available. And when help got thin, that's when they said, I'll sell myself to you in order to survive. Be careful in this season how we posture ourselves because, because what you don't want to do is to lose yourself for the sake of survival. You lose yourself to alcoholism for the safe, sake of survival. You lose yourself to drug addiction for the sake of survival. You lose yourself. Watch this. Watch this. You latch on to some no good joker, and you know he ain't no good. If, if, you, if you had things going for yourself, you wouldn't be latched on to that joker, but you've latched on to that joker for the sake of survival. Huh? And then you find yourself enslaved in Egypt. That's what happened. Here, Joseph. Ladies and I want you to understand something here. God, again, did not design this season. Let me, let me clarify something. God didn't create this. God allowed this. And God allowed this in order to produce something in us that looks more like him. God didn't create this. God allowed this. Why? To produce a church that looks more like him. God didn't create this. God allowed this. Huh? We Bible study on, on this Wednesday night, uh, book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel talked about God spoke to Ezekiel and God said, God said, I don't want nobody to die. Matter of fact, repent and live. 
repent and live. Turn, live. So, so what, I, what I'm giving you, what I'm arming you with, ladies and gentlemen, is all wisdom to implement in your new normal. I'm giving you some old wisdom to implement in your new normal. Huh? Because what they want to do is to dish out some new wisdom to implement in your new normal. And you need to understand something here. There's no such a thing. <laughs> That's a thing. Run from it. Run from it. Uh, I, I, some, a new thought process. Huh? Uh, a, 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 new, a, new, a new posture, a new way of, of relating to God. Huh? A new strange doctrine, huh? A new strange orientation to Scripture, huh? A new strange spin on the Word of God. They tell them the truth is the truth. And what God wants us to do in this season is to adhere to the truth. Somebody say amen. It's to adhere to the truth. Now, what's this? I got to say something. I got to say something. The Bible tells us uh, in the book of of Amos, and I'm going to get to my text. The Bible tells in the book of Amos, Amos chapter 8, it tells us that, uh, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will send a famine on the land. Watch this. Not a famine of bread, nor, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. So what God told Amos in the book of Amos, see, we're concerned about the wrong thing. Y'all need to know something. This is not a... Uh, this is not a shortage of food. I just saw a, a, a news article, a news report on yesterday, and it said in the news report on yesterday that, uh, that farmers are uh, they're having to throw away their crops. And the reason why they're having to throw away their crops is because of the restaurants, the restaurants being out, right? And so they're not selling the quantity of food that they want sold. Right? And so they're having to throw away their crops, not selling the quantity of food that they want sold. So this isn't a situation to where there's lack. What this is is a situation of distribution. This is a distribution issue. This is a distribution issue. And so while the enemy wants us to believe that there is that there's a lack of resources, there's not a lack of resources, but there's a lack of organized distribution to get the resources to the people. Well, Amos tells us, the book of Amos tells us that in the last days that there will not be, that there will be a famine in the land. But there won't be a famine in the land concerning food and, and rice and potatoes. And there won't be a famine in the land concerning livestock. But there will be a famine in the land of the word of God. Of the word of God. Right now we're living in a time to where there's a famine in the land of the word of God. And the word of God is not the truth in its totality. It's not going out there before the people. You got folk in this season. It's a sad reality as I, as I uh, peruse my Facebook feed, and I see all of these gimmicks that these churches are trying to come up with in order to captivate the people. All of these gimmicks. I'm so sorry. I ain't got no gimmicks. All I got is the Word of God. I'm so sorry. I ain't got no smoke machines. I ain't got no glitter. I, 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 I'm sorry. I don't have no laser show. All I've got is the Word of God, and this Word is what's gonna, it's what's gonna set you free. This word, we got to stand on the truth of God's word. Because in this season, in this season, Amos tells us that there is a famine in the land. And the famine is the famine of the word of God. Word ain't being preached. Folk ain't being told the truth. Word being changed. Well, let me go a little bit further than that. A little bit further than that. Scripture tells me, Scripture tells me that uh, that in the last days, Luke, Luke, Luke chapter 21, that, that then he said unto them, nation will rise up against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes. Watch this. And various famines and pestilences. Watch this. And there, and, and there will be terrors and great signs, uh, great signs from, from heaven. Great signs for heaven, from heaven. And so the Bible talks about famines, but oftentimes when we think of famines, we think of famines only as it relates to food product. But I need you to understand what 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 says, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound doctrine. 
but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. The time is coming. That's what Amos said. The time is coming. And so you need to understand something, that it is more important in this season for us to get closer to God and to the truth of his word than at any other time. Why? Because we are in the last days. Well, Pastor Biden, what are you talking about? We're in the last days. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in the last days. We're in the last days. If, biblically, if you look at the biblical timeline, we are in the end of the church age. And by being in the end of the church age, that means that, that, means that right now in the heavenlies, there's a, there's a kingdom army that's getting ready to return for, for, for its church. Right now in the heavenlies, there's, there's horses being saddled right now in the heavenlies. Oh, I don't like that kind of preaching. What, what kind of preaching you want? What kind of preaching you want? Because you can flip the channel and you can go get some happy preach, some happy talk. You, you can flip the channel and you can surf the Internet and you can find your flavor. But, but I, what I came with, because God holds me accountable, God holds me accountable, I've got to bring and present the word of truth in its totality. Because I need people to know that he is coming. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Wait, wait a minute, whoa, what, what do you mean? Uh, uh, sir, but church without spot or wrinkle, because I'm messed up, I'm flawed up. I got some issues in my life. I've done too much in my life. Does, does that mean he's going to exclude me? Pastor Byron, don't, don't, don't tell me that, because I, I really I want to go when it comes. I don't want to be left behind. Here's what you need to understand, is that in order for you to be included in that number of being a part of the church without spot or wrinkle, you simply must just insert yourself in him and allow him to be in you. You be in Christ, he be in you. Watch this. And just as he took our sin nature, you take his righteousness. Woo, God. Just as you took his sin, sin nature, he took our sin nature, you take his righteousness. And watch this. And so when God comes back, hallelujah, he don't even see you. He think he's picking up Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Folk, folk always been wondering how that work. How's that going to work? When the bus of heaven pulls up, they don't even see you. They think they're picking up Jesus. Hallelujah. Why? Because we are in him. He is in us. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians, it tells us, it tells us that your mind is a great gift from God. That's what it tells us. It tells us that your mind is a great gift from God. Your mind is a great gift from God. The human mind is an amazing and it's a powerful instrument, the mind. Somebody say the mind. Somebody say the mind because in order for us to successfully navigate this new normal, we've got to apply some old wisdom. In order for us to navigate this new normal, we've got to apply some old wisdom. Let me stop by there. You should have been cooking at home in the first place. Somebody say old wisdom. Somebody say old wisdom. My grandfather never ate a pizza. My grandfather never ate from Taco Bell. He didn't know what Taco Bell was. I'm, I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up. When we came home with Taco Bell, he'd make fun of us. You know what he ate? He ate beans. He ate cornbread. And, see, and so in this new normal, we've got to apply some old wisdom. And as a result of applying some old wisdom in this new normal, can I tell you something? They paid cash for everything. When they bought a new Lincoln Town car, somebody, y'all know what I'm talking about. When they went down to the dealership and they bought a new Lincoln Town car, they didn't pay, uh, they didn't get a loan from the bank, Brother Jeremy. Huh? They paid cash for the new Lincoln Town car. Why? Because they were applying some old wisdom in their new normal. Because there's always seasons of new normal. There's always seasons of new normal. When uh, the slaves were emancipated and they were released from slavery, that was a new normal for American society. And so people had to figure out how do we navigate in this new normal. Huh? When segregation of schools was ended, it became a new normal for America. And folks had to figure out how do we navigate this new 
normal. When women's rights and women's suffrage came on the scene and, and women had rights that they once didn't have, it became a new normal. And so how do we navigate this new normal? You navigate the new normals in life that you encounter in your life through the Word of God. Huh? You were single once. You laid with a woman. You had a baby. That baby became your new normal. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You bought a house, and now you have a mortgage payment. That mortgage payment has become a part of your new normal. You can't ignore the mortgage payment, but what you do is you apply some old wisdom to your new normal. And the old wisdom says, eat at home. Save some money so that you can be successful in navigating your new normal. Truth be told, you should already have been practicing some form of social distancing. You've been too close to the devil in the first place. And that's why the devil has been infiltrating your home, getting into you, getting into your children, is because you haven't been practicing good spiritual social distancing. You go to the club and you come back four, five, six demons attached to you that you didn't have before you went to the club. You entertaining the devil. You weren't practicing social distancing. You understand that? And see, and we, you end up in a worse state than what you was in. And you think it's all good time. Good to you hanging out with good time Charlie and fun time Susie. Huh? And you end up with an infestation of demonic oppression in your life that is just running you silly. Because you don't know how to practice social distancing. So what God did, God said, since you ain't going to sit down, I'm going to sit yourself down. I'm going to sit your tail down. I'm going to make you be still until it becomes a habit. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. That sounds like the love of God to me. That sounds like the love of God to me. Because what God did is God, what he imposed is environmental change. <laughs> see, see, I used to work, I used to be, See, you know, I pastor, I do all this stuff. But see, I was, a, I was the executive director with an organization uh, called Mothers Against Drunk Driving. And so we worked on underage drinking and drunk driving. And one of the things that we did is that we, uh, we worked on this thing called environmental change. And that's when we took the decision out of the hands of the young people. And we really, we made it impossible for them to access alcohol like they once did. That, that means that I'm going to take, I love you so much, I'm going to take the power out of your hands. I'm going to take the decision out of your hands, and I'm going to impose some environmental change. Hallelujah. That's when they, they changed the drinking age to 21, and, and that's when they made it illegal to, to do certain things, right, uh, at, at a certain age group, and binge drinking parties and keg parties and all the types of stuff that happens on college campuses. What God did in this season is he imposed some environmental change. God said, I love you so much that I'm going to cause the church to sit down. Watch this. Some of y'all have been delivered from a behavior that you couldn't shake on your own. Some of y'all, money burned through your hand. Some of y'all, you spent every dollar as soon as you got it. Because you were busy trying to keep up with the Joneses. Some of y'all, you went out and spent $400 on some Brazilian weave. Some of y'all, you went out and you bought Gucci and Prada and Louis Vuitton. Some of y'all, because your friends and your mom and them went on the cruise, you went out. Guess what? God sent the, it, God sent the pandemic to the cruise ship. <laughs> God help me. God sent, God shut down your beauty salon. God shut down your barbershop. God shut down all of those things so that you have no choice but to change your behavior. Watch this. And after 30 days, they say, they say it becomes a habit. They say it becomes a habit after about 30 days. And see, some of y'all, watch this. When the economy and the clubs do open back up, some of y'all, you're going to drive by and you're going to say, I don't know why I was ever in there. I don't know why, I don't even know why I was in that dark, smoky, musty place. Because God had so much greater in store for me. Somebody say amen. So what the enemy wants to do, what the enemy wants to do is play with your mind. 
What is the mind? Write this down. The mind is the seat of intellect. In fact, it's the seat of intellect. It's the seat of intellect. The mind is the seat of intellect. And so you've got to understand that, that in order for you to navigate this new normal, you've got to get, the, get a handle on the seat of intellect, which is your mind. And neuroscientists will tell you that, that every mind has approximately 10 billion neurons. Every single one of those neurons has 100 connectors. Each connector on each one of those neurons is capable of over 200 calculations per second. That means that your brain is capable of 200 billion calculations per second. You had no idea that your brain can do that. Psychologists will tell you that every brain uh, at a minimum has about 10,000 thoughts that go through the human mind every day. And so that's why it makes more significance the thing that Paul said because Paul said that I had to learn how to cast down every thought that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. I had, to, I had to learn how to cast it down every. So what that means is that for at a minimum, each of you under the sound of my voice, you have about 10,000 thoughts that pass through your mind. Now, it's only between you and God to determine if those thoughts are God thoughts or if those thoughts are of the devil. But whatever type of thoughts they are, you've got to learn how to govern your thoughts in this new normal. Govern your thoughts in this new normal. Don't be in a worse state than what you were in. Huh? Govern your thoughts. When you think about going to the refrigerator, getting you a ding-dong, get you a carrot. Govern your thoughts. Because what I'm not trying to do is we come out of corona and I'm burying some people in this church because of diabetes. Because you can't stay out of the refrigerator in the season of pandemic. I'm going to the hospital visiting people that ate riblets to death. Govern your thoughts. Somebody say amen. Govern your thoughts as it pertains to alcoholism. One drink turns to two drinks. Two drinks turn to three drinks. Three turns to four. Huh? And then you come out of this situation in a worse state than what you were in. Govern your thoughts. This is the time for the church to be praying. Why? Because the devil is busy, and he's busy not just in the arena of corona. The devil is busy. Watch this. They say that the rates of alcoholism have shot through the roof. We know that. They say that domestic violence has shot through the roof. Can I tell you something else that shot through the roof? Child molestation has shot through the roof. Why? Why is child molestation shot through the roof? Because right now, uh, those children, they, the only way that many of those children would report the offense is at the schoolhouse. Now they're stuck at home being molested by their big cousins and their family members. Y'all don't want me to tell the truth. Can I just tell the truth? Now they stuck at home being molested. I'm talking about boys and girls by their big cousins and their family members, and they don't have a way to report that abuse. And so when we do finally cycle out of this situation, you're going to have a lot of damaged young people that need to be ministered to. And so this is the season where the church needs to be praying and fasting and seeking the face of God. There were people... And, and, and that, that have come out with all types of foreign addictions, pornography, and so on and so forth. You didn't come into this season with that. But because of social distancing, now you've developed an appetite for pornography. So the devil is using this occasion of corona to further distance. Watch this. And I ain't just talking about the world. I know the behaviors of the world. I'm talking about the church. And so, pastors, what you're going to have that comes back to your church in, in some instances, that's why it's so important to stay connected. Make sure your people are engaged in meaningful dialogue by way of Bible study. Make sure your people are, are, uh, are, are, are watching online or staying connected in some way, shape, or form. Staying connected to their small groups. Why is that? Because if they don't, then they will drift. And they're going to drift away from God, and they're going to drift into the hands of the enemy. And, and when the church is able to resume the fellowship, you're going to have a church, if we're not careful, that's in worse condition than they were prior to the pandemic. Because now they're bringing back a lot of, a lot of garbage that they once had. And let me add something to that. And then you got church members, watch this. Not only do they bring back garbage, they're bringing back confusion. Why do they bring back confusion? Because now 
they listening to every church in America. They listen to every church in America, right? And they don't have the ability to sift through what is truth and what isn't truth, what's God and what ain't God. Because some pastors and some churches have gotten good at hiding their lack of truth and substance behind the laser show. So, and so be careful as we navigate this new normal. What are my, what are my recommendation, recommendation to you, ladies and gentlemen? Get yourself into a Bible-believing church. Connect with that Bible-believing church on every platform. Take advantage of the lessons and the Bible studies and the opportunities to engage and to stay connected in this season. And as soon as possible, when you can fellowship, you come and you be a part of the fellowship. Huh? Because that's how the church stays uh, in growth mode. Just come and be a part of the fellowship. Am I teaching good today? Can I, can I take a few more minutes of your time? Let me just take a few more minutes of your time. And let me tell you that the mind is the seat of intellect. It is the seat of your thinking, the seat uh, of your thinking and intellect. Write this down. The mind is also the place uh, we believe of your emotion. It is the center of your emotion. Now, now, now also, it's important for you to understand that when the Bible talks about the mind and the Bible talks about uh, the heart, oftentimes the Bible is talking about the, the heart and the mind are the same thing, okay? Because, because the heart, the, the, physically the heart doesn't do anything, but it pumps blood through your body. So, so the heart, you know, when folks say, oh, you have my heart, oh, my heart aches for you, it is an, an, it, it, it's interpretation. What it is saying is that my emotions ache for you. My, my mind, you are on my mind. It is, it, it is, so when the Bible talks about the heart and, and the mind, the Bible is talking about the same thing. So how do we navigate this new season? Here's, here's, here's what you need to understand. They tell me that 65% of illnesses in America begins from a state of mind. They tell me that 65% of illnesses in, state of, in, in America begins from this thing called stress. Okay. 65% of illnesses in the world are stress-related. You ain't got to raise your hand. You ain't got to raise your hand in your living room. You, gotta raise, you ain't got to raise your hand by way of social media. But how many of y'all have woke up in a panic stress thinking you can't breathe during the season of corona? How many of y'all have, have been checking yourself for symptoms, every time you look around in this season of corona, huh? because you, you allow the enemy to cause you to obsess about a thing, and if you move into the place of stressing about a thing, I need you to understand something here. It will weaken your immune system, and it will attract a thing. It will, let me get like this, let me get this. So, watch this, watch this, so watch this. So I'm, I am, I am, uh, I am infirmity. One of the manifestations of a spirit of infirmity is corona. I am infirmity. I am, I, I am, I, that's what I am. I, I'm a demonic force. And I'm walking around because I'm on assignment from, from my captain to, to I'm, I won't do what he do. I'm going to go through and I'm going to seek who I may devour. <laughs> God, I'm going to seek who I may devour. So, so here I am, corona, and I'm looking, I'm looking for an open door. You know, the other day I walked in my garage. The other day I walked in my garage, and there was a cat in my garage. How did the cat get in my garage? The cat got in my garage because I was taking some groceries out the car, and I, and I took the groceries into the house, and the garage door was open. And so when I went out, there was a cat in my garage. I didn't get angry at the cat. I didn't chase the cat down the street. I didn't seek to destroy the cat. Why? Because... It wasn't the cat's fault that the cat was in my garage. It was my fault that the cat was in my garage. Why? Because I'm the one that left the garage door open. And so the cat, in fact, did what the cat was geared to do, and that is be curious and end up in places where it's not supposed to be. So when you have these demonic spirits that are right now having a field day in the earth realm, why? Because they're fueled by fear and panic and stress. 
right? And so an APB from the pits of hell has gone out and every spirit of infirmity and dark spirit has invaded the Americas and they are circling your neighborhoods and they are looking for fear and panic and they're looking to strike. And when they see that fear and that panic in you, they attract, they're attracted to you. And they, and they will linger until they find an open door. Are you listening to me? I'm trying to, I'm really, hey, Facebook, I'm really trying to give you some old wisdom to apply to this new normal. I'm trying, I'm trying to give you some old wisdom to apply to this new normal. Why? Because the enemy doesn't want you to have the truth. The enemy doesn't want you to have the truth. The enemy doesn't want you to know that, that uh, your mind is the seat of your intellect, that your mind is the seat of your thinking. The enemy doesn't want you to know that the mind is the seat of your emotions. The enemy doesn't want you to know that not only is the mind the seat of your intellect and the seat of your emotions, write this down, the mind is also the center of your will. It, it, it is. It's the center of your will. The center of your will. Doctors have come, and they've discovered that, that there are people who will, they will will themselves to live. They will will themselves. They, that vital, watch this, vital organs might cease to function, but there are people that they will will themselves to live. I'm not going to die until my daughter fly in from New York City. I'm not going to die until that relative comes in on that boat. They will will themselves to live. So if the mind is this powerful, you need to understand why in this new normal, the devil is attempting to attack you in your mind. Oh, I said all that. So, so the, the enemy is attempting to attack you in your mind. Well, old folks sang a song and they said, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And that's a great song. That's a great song. And there's, there's an element of truth to that song. But I want to say something to you today. You ain't on the battlefield. You are the battlefield. The battlefield is the battlefield of your mind. And so what the enemy is doing is the enemy is waging warfare against your mind. The Bible says, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, As a man thinketh in his heart, in his mind, within himself, so is he. Let me say it again. Oh, wisdom, oh, wisdom, oh, wisdom. Type, come on, type that. As a man thinketh in his heart, in his mind, in his, so it, within himself, so is he. You become what you think about. Huh? Isaiah said it like this. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose, uh, whose mind is stayed on him to keep you in perfect peace. What kind of peace? What kind of peace you got back there? Perfect. <laughs> you ever been to a restaurant? He said, what you got back there? What kind of chicken? You? What kind of peace you got back there, Jesus? Perfect. God said, I'm going to keep you in perfect peace. Who? Whose mind is stayed on him. So what the enemy wants you to do in this new normal is to create a new normal to where you're not focused on him. And when you're not focused on him, it robs you of perfect peace. Yeah, no perfect peace robs you of perfect peace. I ain't got time to look at nothing else. I just got to look at Jesus. Come on, Peter. If, 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 if I could just talk to Peter. Oh, God. If I could just have an interview with Brother Peter. I, I, I just believe Brother Peter would tell me, Pastor Bynum, if I can go back and do it all over again. If I can go back and do it all over again. I would never have taken my eyes off of Jesus. Because if I could go back and do it all over again, if, if I would have kept my eyes on Jesus, I wouldn't have denied him three times when the cock crowed. <laughs> if I kept my eyes on Jesus, I never would have been in predicament to draw my sword and acting in flesh and impulse when, it, when they came to arrest Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. If I would have just kept my eyes on Jesus. If I would have kept my eyes on Jesus, I never would have turned in my preaching resignation and after the crucifixion, gone back to fishing because I thought that I had now disqualified myself from the calling and future calling and God can't use me no more. If I would have only have kept my eyes on Jesus, 
What God is saying to the church in this season, oh God, is keep your eyes on me. And if you keep your eyes on me, I will keep you in perfect peace. Perfect peace. Perfect, perfect. What, what, what perfection? That's a level of, that's a, that's a mature peace that is, it's just, it's just right. It's just, it's, it's the type of peace that truly passeth all understanding. God said, I'm going to keep you in perfect peace. So what, what is the, what's the battlefield? Philippians tells like this. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Have this mind in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Huh? Well, think about that. So you mean tell me I can have the mind which was in Christ Jesus? And, I, and, 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 and have the influence and the impact on my mind? So the mind that was in Christ Jesus, I can have it in my mind? <laughs> God, so you know, I can have the mind that was in Jesus in my mind? <laughs> I, can, I can take on the mind of Christ in my mind in this new normal? That's what God is saying. Hey, God is saying, church, church, take the mind. Take my mind. Because if you don't take my mind in this new normal, you will lose your mind. But if you take my mind, church, I will keep you in perfect peace. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says this. Here's what it says. It says, don't be conformed to this world. What does that mean, conform? Conform, conform, shaped, don't be molded. So don't be shaped or molded by the world. I, you know, I know folks think I'm stubborn. I know there's some folk who think, oh, oh, you know, he's one of them faith preachers. He preaching by faith, and yeah, I'm preaching by faith. I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to try to talk by faith. I'm going to try to live by faith. I'm going to try to stand on faith. That's what I am. Because the Bible says, it doesn't say without your approval, it's impossible to please God. The Bible says without faith. It's impossible to please God. So I'm not looking for your approval. Because I can have your approval and go to hell. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so I got to walk by faith in this season. And I've learned that the ammunition that God has given us is the word. I want you to know I made up in my mind I'm going to teach this word today so that I want the devil screaming. I made up in my mind, I want the devil going, ah! Because the power is in the word of God. It's in the word. Jesus said, don't, Romans, don't be conformed, be molded, but be transformed through the renewing of your mind. Jesus said, it is out of your heart, the heart, the mind, what is it? Write this down. The heart and the mind, it is the control room of your life. The heart and the mind, it is the control room of your life. That's why the devil is waging warfare against your mind. Because it is the control room of your life. And what you have to do is, is, is you've got to kick the devil out of your control room. He is unauthorized personnel. <laughs> he doesn't have clearance. Huh? He is not supposed to be there. And, and watch this. And the only reason why he's still there is because you ain't called him on it. Oh, God. You ain't called him on it. You just, you just got to call him on it. You got to say, hey, 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 bro. Uh. You, you, you supposed to be in this section. You supposed to be in this area. Come on now. Come on now. If I was on your line, uh, 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 Brother Jason, if I was in your area and I'm all of a sudden, you, I'm, yeah, I'm your pastor. But if I'm, in, if I'm in down there at the post office and I'm in, I'm just in there and I'm sifting and sorting and moving. I'm the pastor. This is the pastor. I love you, pastor. You're good, but you, I, you ain't supposed to be here. You don't have clearance to be here. And when you serve me, notice, then your next job is to escort me to the door. Some of us, we've allowed the enemy to wreak havoc in our mind 
And it, and it becomes a generational curse because guess what? He wreaked havoc in your mind, and then guess what? He begins to wreak havoc in the mind of your children and future generations. And what we got to understand is we've got to stop, stop making the battlefield this external thing, this thing. Oh, the battlefield. Oh, this is the battlefield. Oh, the battlefield. And Because and, and, when you think in those terms that the battlefield is external, you, it never has any internal implication. But what you need to understand is that the primary battlefield of the enemy is right here in our mind. Come on, y'all, think about it. Where did it start in your mind? Where did that, where did that thing, you know that thing? Come on. You know that thing that you struggle with? Where did it begin in your mind? Where did you conceive that thought? In your mind, in your heart, your mind. Huh? Where did that wickedness first take birth? In your mind. And so the enemy is waging war in your mind. What the devil doesn't want you to do is to cast that thought down. Cast it down. That's why we, you know what our Christian walk should look like? You remember I said we had 10,000 thoughts every day? We should be like this. Okay, that's God. That ain't God. That's God. That ain't God. In the spirit, we should be casting down those thoughts that exalted themselves against the knowledge of God. Anything that is not God, we need to be pulling that thing down. Why? So that we can have the mind of Christ. Talking about new normal, old wisdom. Somebody say amen. New normal, old wisdom. New normal, old wisdom. The mind is the control room. Huh? And you are the battlefield. What does Satan desire? Write this down. Write this down. So I'm going to labor. I'm going to labor a little bit today. Because uh, I believe, I, I feel a release. I, I, I feel a release. And there are folks that's mad. Now, let me tell you something. I feel a release. I do believe that God has said enough is enough. Right? I don't care what the enemy says. I don't care what the data says. I believe that what you're going to see, I believe you're going to see a decline in numbers. I believe you're going to see less hospitalizations. I believe you're going to see less people dying. I believe why? Because God believes that God has said enough is enough. And there are people that are saying, well, we're opening up the economy too soon. But you know what? I just believe God has said enough is enough. I, I do. I do believe that. I do believe that. I believe that God, I believe that there is a remnant, not all of God's people. I believe that there is a qualified remnant that has cried out to God and that is saying, Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. And the Bible says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. So what that means is, fool God, for there to be this, this distinction drawn between it, prayers, it didn't say the prayers of, of, the, of the saints or prayers of God's people. Prayer, it said specifically the prayers of the righteous of Abraham. What that means is that there are some other folks that are in the household of faith that their prayers don't mean much. There's prayers of the righteous that avail. That means God says yes. That means God answers, God responds to the prayers of the righteous. Then there's some prayers of folks that don't mean much. And, if, 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 and I want to I challenge you, if that's you, if you're in a place of where your prayers don't mean much, and you want to move to the place of, of your prayers availeth much, it all de is determined by your proximity, availability to God and for God. Huh? And responding to God appropriately. And walking by faith and not by sight. And leaning not into your own understanding. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because what happens is we tend to lean on our own understanding. And our own understanding can't carry the weight of us. You're listening to me. We tend to try to prop our life up with our own understanding. And our own understanding is not built to carry that weight. It's a ladder that won't hold. Huh? It's a scaffold that will collapse. It's not built to carry the weight of our life. But I want you to understand that there is a foundation that can carry every weight. And that foundation is found in Jesus. He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright and morning star. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He is the wheel in the middle of the wheel. He is the rock and the solid foundation on which I stand. Hallelujah. Amazing thing. And, and even when he died, they took the rock and put the rock inside of a rock. And then they enclosed him in a rock. The rock inside of a rock and laid on a rock and closed by rocks. But he is the solid foundation. What's his name? His name is Jesus, the son of the living God. And he came to liberate and to set the captives free. What captives? Us. Captives. Captives of what, Pastor Bynum? Captives of this prison that the devil is trying to call 
the new normal. And I refuse to be imprisoned by this new concoction of the devil called the new normal. Because I wasn't imprisoned by your old normal. Maybe you fell prey to uh, some concoction of the enemy in your past. But ladies and gentlemen, you can make a decision not to fall prey to that today. The choice is yours. I have not ran out of word. <laughs> I want to keep going. But I, I just ran out of time. Ran out of time. new normal old wisdom new normal old wisdom there have been new normals throughout history prohibition At one point you couldn't purchase alcohol they passed prohibition. Now, the alcohol, you can, you can buy booze. That became a new normal. You listening to me? But the world's new normal does not have to invade your mind. Reserve this spot for the kingdom. In Jesus' name. So on today, maybe you're watching by way of social media. Maybe you're watching by way of social media. And, uh, man, you've had, this has been tough. This has been rough. This has really been rough for you, this season of pandemic. You're watching, and uh, maybe you've been afraid. Money is low. You got laid off. You got furloughed. You bought as many groceries as you could buy up until that point, and then, you, you, you began to run out of that. Then you had to do something you never did before. You had to go down to the food pantry and get help. And your children, they were so accustomed to you buying the, 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 uh, the Fruit Loops. And now you're eating the Fruit Loopies or the, the off-brand. And you, you, they, you know, your kids, they were accustomed to Peter Pan peanut butter. And now you got peanut butter. And you feel less than, and you feel overwhelmed. Here's what I want you to know. I want you to know that this is only temporary. And that God has already stamped an expiration date on your storm. Now, well, most of us, watch this, which, which most, most of us, <laughs> if you're like me, I'm pretty frugal. I get in trouble for this. Have y'all ever had bread that expired before? You had bread expired. What do you do when you go to the expired bread if you like me? Well, so, so Brother Jay said he throws it in the trash. If you like me, you grew up the way I grew up. You open that expired bread and you smell it. Ain't that right? And if it passed the smell test, you're going to slap some meat on that bread. Uh, see, see, Jason's high society, apparently. High society. He, he, he said, go, he going to go on and get him another loaf of bread. No, if you grew up like I grew up, you, you open that bread and you say, this, shoot, this bread is still good. Boy, you better eat this bread. Name of Jesus. Huh? Pass smell test. They, stopped, they, they stamped an expiration date on it. And what tends to happen is we allow it to exist in our lives beyond the expiration date. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that God has stamped an expiration date on your unemployment. He stamped an expiration date on, on, on it's today, on your depression, on that anxiety, huh? on that suicidal thought. It expired when? Today. It expired today. Now, it's up to you not to allow it to exist in your mind beyond its expiration date. This is the home. So that bread that exists on my countertop beyond the expiration date, it's just like my mind. If I allow that thought to exist 
beyond the expiration date, whose fault is it? It's my fault. What God wants us to do is to corral our faults, identify those that he already stamped an expiration date on, get rid of it. That's why he said, cast, that's taking out the trash, y'all. <laughs> he said, cast my cares upon me, for I care for you. That means I'm going to cast it. I'm going to take it. I'm going to set it out there on the curb, and I'm waiting on the folk to come by and pick it up. And when they pick it up, I'm going to let them go. I ain't going to chase the truck down. Because he had already stamped an expiration date on it. You're watching by way of social media. You're watching our Limitless Church family those from around the world there's an expiration date on your storm trouble won't last always scripture tells us and it's very reassuring weeping may endure for a night but joy does come in the morning it may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning and that's a that's a uh, that's a continuation that is a it's a perpetual thing it cometh in the morning that's if you can endure for a night joy cometh in the morning Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Pastor Bynum, on today I want to be saved. I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. If that's you, uh, type that in the comment. I want to be saved. And I'm going to pray the prayer of faith with you on today uh, before we end our service on today. I'm going to pray the prayer of faith. But I want you to type that in the comment. Pastor Bynum, I want to be saved. Also, type in that comment. Pastor Bynum, I want to be baptized. I want to be baptized. And as soon as we can be back amongst the fellowship, then we're going to make sure that you get baptized. And if, and if it lingers for a little bit, then I virtually, uh, in Jesus' name, I'm going to watch you dip yourself in some water and, and, and online or something, and we're going to get you baptized in Jesus' name. Also, if you want to become a member of Limitless Church, this is good ground. If you want to become a member of Limitless Church, go and type that in the line. Hey, guys, I want to join this church. Um, you know, the, the power of God, I've been watching you guys for a while. The power of God is certainly present. I enjoy the teaching. I enjoy the worship. I want to be a part of this church. I know where you're located. Um, type that in the line, and we'll have some of our leaders to reach out to you as well. We would love to welcome you um, as a member of Limitless Church. And let's just upset the enemy, huh? Because, because you can always testify that it was during the pandemic that I got closer to God. It was during the pandemic that I heard the voice of God, and I responded appropriately, and, and my life changed forever. And that can be you, and that can be your testimony. Um, pray this prayer with me. Father, forgive me of my sins. I am a sinner. But on today, I confess my sins. But I confess I'm a sinner. And I am in need of a Savior. That preacher, that, that preacher man, that red shirt, he said that you can save me. He said you can save me. He said if I confess with my mouth, believe in my heart, that, that what you accomplished there on Calvary's cross, that you died death, the burial, and the resurrection is true. If I believe that and I receive that finished work, that I can be saved. Father, I believe it. Help my unbelief. But I'm stepping out on faith right now into waters that I'm not, I'm not unfamiliar with. But I want a relationship with you. I want to walk in the confidence of, of, of the kingdom. I want to walk in kingdom confidence. I want to be a man or a woman full of the Holy Ghost and with power. I don't want to be a feeble Christian. I don't want to be an intellectual Christian that has this intellectual grasp on, on things. I want to know you for real. Help me to know you for real in Jesus' name. And if I know you for real, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy upon me all days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, God, release your, your anointing. Release your blessing. Release your power. Cover the earth in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Melanie Brown, we're praying for you. Um, 
in the loss of your mother on yesterday, Sister Melanie Brown. We're praying for you. We're praying for you, God. I pray for strength for Sister Melanie Brown. She also wants to give her life to the Lord on today, and we celebrate that. But, God, I pray for your daughter on today. I lift Melanie Brown up before you, and I pray for supernatural comfort in this hour, in this season, in Jesus' name, for Sister Melanie Brown and for all others that have been affected uh, by uh, this pandemic and, and the economy, downturn, and so many other things. God, help your people in Jesus' name. God, have mercy in the name of Jesus. Father, do it for your glory. And we will be faithful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' name. Hey, y'all, follow us on social media. Follow us on Facebook. Look for us on YouTube, Limitless Church Dallas. Subscribe to our, our YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram. And we'll see you guys on Wednesday as we go live for our, our midweek feeding on Wednesday night. Amen. Y'all be blessed. We love you. Amen. Look up to the heavens. Say, Lord, bless me. You are just